All right, now it's time for the ARP head studs. Here's the instructions to come with them. It doesn't say on there that I'm supposed to lube the threads that go into the block, but I'm going to anyway. Also on this front one here, this goes into the water jacket. So on this stud, I'm gonna add a thread sealant. I don't have the ARP thread sealant, but I do have this Permatex. This works really well. It's meant for exactly what we're using it for. So just gonna apply a healthy amount to these threads. Get them really gooped up. And then feed it in. All right, so I got it in there hand tight. Now I'm just gonna put a 3 16 Allen in the top and just give it a little bit of a snug. Just a little bit. Now for the rest of them, just gonna get a little bit of this on the threads only, not on the tip, so it doesn't bottom out hydro lock. And thread them all down in there. Give them just a slight snug at the end, all the way down the line. Should also mention that there's two different length studs. Make sure that the taller studs, the longer studs, are on the side that your intake and exhaust bolts onto, and the shorter ones are on the, I guess, passenger side of the motor. All right, that's looking good. Got all the studs installed. Got the surface for the head gasket all prepped up and ready to go. All right, here's the head gasket. It's 43 thousandths of an inch thick. You can see some laser etching there. Make that face up and make sure that you get the water jacket holes lined up for cylinder number six. All right, sitting on there looking good. So this is the Edelbrock 50159 head. You can see it's got these monster valves on here. I got those from 505 and all over over at High Pro Engines in Denver. Did the machine work for them. The 50159 head comes basically as a casting with a few inserts in it. And got to add everything else to it. Drop that sucker on those studs. Slip it down nice and easy. Make sure to get it in all those threads. Get it all in there. Get a coating on the washers and inside the nuts. All right, so we're gonna snug all these first and then we're gonna start in a circular pattern. We're gonna start at 22 foot-pounds and then go to 45 foot-pounds, then up to 110 foot-pounds for the last sequence. But it'll go from the center bolt, one, two, three, four, five, six, just in a circular pattern all the way around and then start over 45 and then 110. 22. 45 and 110. All right, now it's time to mount the rocker arms and push rods, but we gotta make sure we got the right push rod length. So we could use this adjustable length push rod just to get it just right the first time. But first I'm gonna just try some uh, factory length push rods. I've got these sealed power um, RP 3275. That's a factory four liter Cherokee push rod length. So first let's uh, set these rockers on here. This little guy goes up on here. All right. I've got this set to top dead center where both valves are completely closed. Since there's a little bridge bar in there, I'm going to use two push rods. I want to get them down right into that center locking point on the lifter. And then set them right underneath the cup on these guys. Now I'm just going to snug them down. Just a little bit more. Now I know this is, so those suckers are tight. So what we're measuring for is the amount of preload that these are putting on the lifter. The hydraulic lifter has a little bit of give to it. There's a little reservoir in there that fills up with oil. So what we want to do is have between 30 and 40 thousandths of an inch preload or compression on that lifter to begin with while they're resting flat. So if this was sitting right on top of that lifter, I could push down it kind of springs down a little bit and we're checking to see how far we're springing down. All right, so with the valves closed and 
the rockers tighten down, just snug down, there should be preload on it right now. So setting these rulers on there, I can take a scratch all and just make a little mark. The smaller the scratch, the tighter the line you can make, the more accurate it'll be. So now with that line there, I can loosen up the rockers, do both of them because they're bridged and that'll make a difference. You want it so that they're just kind of resting on the top of their push rods. And then you can see it's going to be really hard with the camera how much of a difference there is between now and that line that's just above it that we just put on there. All right, you can see the scratched line. And for demonstration, I'm going to use a 30 thousandths and a 32 thousandths, giving me 62 thousandths of an inch on there. And we're right at about 60 thousandths of an inch. That's too much by at least 20 thousandths of an inch. So I need to order new push rods minus 20 to 25 thousandths of an inch to get me in the perfect range. All right, so according to O'Reilly's website, the RP3275 push rod is 9.641 inches long. So I need to order some that are 20 to 30 thousandths of an inch shorter. So the RP3200 is 9.621 inches long. So that's right at 20 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to slip them in there and see what we have. All right, so I've got the new rod in there and scratched, and I've got a 17 thousandths and an 18 thousandths, giving me 35 thousandths of an inch. And if you look at the line, we're going to be right at about 35 thousandths of an inch, putting us right in that range between 30 and 40 thousandths of an inch. So those are the rods. All right, so I put all the push rods in place and laid the rockers on and just barely started the bolt in each one of them. So you can see that they're not all flat, they're at different angles. Well, that's because the cam's in there and they're not all sitting at top dead center. So the firing order being 153624, we're top dead center here. Number five is in the middle of its compression stroke, so these valves are gonna be close as well. So I can snug these ones down and then move on to number three after I crank the engine just a little bit, just turn it slightly, just so all your valves are close when you close it down. And then we're going to scratch and check all of the rods just to make sure there's no variation in the block deck or the head. And as you go with the valves closed, torque them down to 19 foot-pounds. All right, so number one and number five are torqued. Now I'm going to go for number three as I rotate the crank when these valves close. Now I can tighten those down. All right, so all the push rods are the right length. The rockers are all torqued down to 19 foot-pounds. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this oil in the top of each one of these rockers just to fill it up a little bit. Now we'll prep the surface and put that valve cover on. I'm using a stainless steel stud kit for the valve cover and they've got little Allen's in them again to tighten them down. Just gonna use some of this ARP lube on the threads. Tighten them down to 55 inch pounds. All right, all prepped, ready to go. Here's the valve cover gasket, came with the valve cover. Just cleaning the gasket after I pulled it out of the package, I noticed there's a little bit of rubber chunks and stuff on there, so I'm going to go through and really clean this thing up. All right, so the valve cover gasket's on. I set the valve cover on just to test fit it to see if these little uh, oil baffles that go up underneath the cover here would have enough clearance for the rocker arms, and there's plenty, so I'm going to put them back on. The other thing I noticed is that the uh, ARP studs are contacting the cover, so I'm just going to have to mark with a pen right around the edge and take some off with a little grinding wheel. All right, so I've got a sanding drum mounted in the drill press. It doesn't take a whole lot. Just gotta radius these little indentations out just enough to clear those studs and make sure to leave enough room for that gasket. All right, the valve cover fits now. 
but I'm just not sold on this gasket. I'm going to get one where the studs pass through the middle of it. All right, back from O'Reilly, got this uh, Felpro. It's actually for a 91 Cherokee. You see this one's a little different. It'll slide right over the studs. And it says right here, cover side, so this will face up. Just drop it on over the studs and work it down. Much happier with this. It's not going anywhere. All right, just drop that cover on. All right, now the nuts from that kit and ARP lube on each one of those studs and tighten them down to 55 inch pounds.